Hello. What up? What up? Yeah, we live. Okay. We live. Just break through radio. Gloves off. Yeah. It's your show. You do your thing. It's your boy Corona Negra. Here with beautiful young lady. She's about to tell her story. You know. Um, like this break through and gloves off. Coming together. You know what I'm saying? Trying to build our community. You know, show love to everybody. You know, we free, we, we ain't freestyling. Nah. But we, <laughs> you know, everything is true. If, if you ain't bringing the truth, we don't want we don't want to hear your opinion at all. At all. You better bring the truth, man. <laughs> but anyway, you could ask us questions as we going on. You know what I mean? We'll answer them to the best of our ability. You know, so definitely. Once again, this your boy Corona Negra. I'm featuring on. Uh, Breakthrough. This is gloves off feature. So uh, we can get started. Um, you know, I don't know if you want to tell the people your name and you know a little bit about your childhood before we get into the juicy part, so they can at least get a feel of who you are. You know what I mean? Well, my name is Crystal Christian. Born and raised in Bridgeport. Made a name Fernandez. A lot of people know me by that. I don't know if you want to tell the people your name. And, you know a little bit about your childhood. I was childhood born and raised before. in a hollow. Halfway through on the north end. Uh, been with my husband since 2010. Uh, I graduated from Western Connecticut State University. What you graduated for? I have a bachelor's in justice and law administration. So, you know, no dummies over here. Mm-hmm. All right, facts. <laughs> no dummies over here. That's all right. We do what we got to do. I have uh, one daughter with my husband. Her name is Karma. She's beautiful. You know, just trying to keep my family intact and keep everybody on a positive note. And, you know, we do what we got to do on a daily basis. Okay, okay. So, um, basically, I, you know you know why I called you here today. Obviously, the people really don't know why I called you here today. So, um, we can slowly get into that. Um, you, mentioned, you mentioned your husband. So, let, you know, you would like to let the people know who your husband is and, and stuff of that nature, so they could know exactly who you are. My husband' name is Mark. Everybody call him. He's known as Pockets. He's from the South Side, South Fan, Marinaville. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Uh, very good dude, and you know, I just want to give a different insight on to him because you know, the the newspapers and Channel 12 like to butcher and chop the way someone is, the way they're deemed, and stuff like that, and I just need them to know that there's different sides to people, and not what just the criminal system wants you to believe. Okay, so what do, what do they, what do they believe, who do they believe your husband is? They believe he's some type of super gangster kicking in doors every day, you okay. know what I'm saying? He's a, he's a family man, we have our daughter, we've been married since 2012. Um, he works hard. He had a nice job working at Westport. He was bringing in bands a week. You know, he took care of his family. When I got sick, after I finished my college degree with Lupus, he held the family down. He did what he had to do. All around great man. He had great hobbies and stuff like that. He wasn't just what they were portraying him to be. You know. So, so where is he? where is he at right now? He's currently incarcerated uh, in Northern Correctional Institution. You know, that's a max prison, um, level five. Okay. He rarely gets any free time, but you know, he calls all the time to speak to myself and my daughter just to keep the spirits up because you know it's hard going through something like that, and especially they're they're trying to make him seem like he's worse than he is. No okay. regular person. With the normal income, should have a bond of three point two million dollars. Three point two million is his bond. So, what are they charging him <coughs> with? And you know, because three point two million—that's that's a lot. They're so. charging him with uh, robbery, um, murder in the first, conspiracy to commit murder, among a slew of other charges. But basically, those unlawful um, gun charges, things of that nature. Three point two million dollars. I think they had a prejudice against him because there's people who, there's sorry, there's white men in throughout Connecticut who child up their parents 
and you find them behind doors buried and they're buying barely rich as one million dollars. <laughs> facts. <laughs> That's facts. That's facts. Our justice system is so unfair. They give nobody a, a fair chance. You know. The, the so did they? So did they? They gave them this bond. Mm -hmm. You know. You mentioned a little while ago that you had got sick when you got out of college. Yep. You know. Um, and you got sick for what? What? What happened? I have lupus. And what is lupus for those that don't know? Because honestly, I really don't know. I just know the name. Lupus is an autoimmune disorder. And what it is is your body can't tell the difference between good and bad. So it attacks everything. Before I was 27, I've had a heart attack, heart failure. I'm at stage four kidney failure right now. Um, I take 33 medications, three chemos, two biologics, and I still take care of my seven-year-old daughter mm -hmm. and do what I got to do. He's been gone a year, October, November, December. He's been gone a year and three months that I've been doing it all on my own with one income, you know. And he doesn't ask much of me, which I, can, I commend him for. But, you know, regardless, I've been with you for a decade. I'm going to hold you down regardless. Okay. No matter what happens. Anybody else who was doing it before, where they at? Mm. I'm here. I'm here. I'm Fact. always going to be here. So, you know, and you're one of the few people also who have kept in contact with me to to, to inquire about his well-being and stuff like that. And I know he appreciates it. I know just in, just in December, you came to our daughter's birthday party. And that meant the world to him. You know what I'm saying? Because honestly, ever since he's been born, I've had no contact from not one friend people he would ride or die for and it, nothing to see how my daughter doing does she need anything and you know it's hurtful and all that but we do what we gotta do yeah this is this is this is true all this is true so if you want to look it up you could look it up like she told you her name his name is mark christian you know we call him pockets as a bro childhood friend that's a brother from another mother. Believe me, we fought like a hundred thousand times. <laughs> um, I promise you. Anybody that ever been to Roosevelt or be, yeah, even yeah. been to Massac or whatever, they'll tell you. Man, pockets used to fight all the time. I don't care if it was over a toy. And it was all love. <laughs> yes, it was always love. You like, you like a brother, trust me. Definitely, and one of the few people he always asks about. So. Definitely, man. Definitely. And and how do you believe? Your daughter is coping with all of this. You get being sick, and then the fact of her father being gone. Cause I, cause he was there when she was born. So obviously she was. Thirty-seven hours of labor. He was there. I swear, my daughter. She know gunshots before. He, she was even out the womb. Cause all that man played was black ops, twenty-four-seven. <laughs> he was always there. He was there for every single part of her life. So it's a big uproar. And you know, a lot of black families are not married, and you know, she took a lot of pride in that. My mommy and daddy are married, you know what I'm saying? Facts. I took his last name. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's what made never you get married change. at a young age? Because a lot of people, or you say you got married at what age? What age was that? Uh, a couple weeks before I turned 23, I want to say. Okay, and what, what made you get married? Want to wanna be married so young? I understand you was in it's, love. I, I, I didn't want to be married that young. He changed that. I love that man. That's what's up. From head to toe. That's what's up. It can't change that. That's what's up. I love that man. And you know what I'm saying? From, we knew each other for four months before I knew that I wanted to marry that man. Mm. And, my, you know, he had a struggle. My family is traditional in Jamaican. They're like, you're not going to marry this young kid, man. <laughs> but when they saw such, well, he, like, he was such a good father and how he did for my daughter, they couldn't, they couldn't do anything but love him. And he's a part of my family. I know when he got locked up, my stepfather, he he wanted to cry. I never yes. seen that man cry there in my life. Because that's fam. Yeah, definitely. definitely. You know, he never abandoned me when I was sick. You know, a lot of young men don't know how to handle stuff like that. But even through the chemo, he will come with me to chemo. So how many times you go to, like, chemo and, and stuff like that? Well, it that? was really, really bad, especially when the... Re and I got sick, say, June... By September, I was in phase four kidney failure. Mm. And I was in the hospital two, three weeks at a time, every month. And he was there through everything. He came, he went to work six to six, in hard labor, doing mason work and paving, all throughout Fairfield County, 
Then he'll come pick up our child, come see me in the hospital, take care of the bills, do everything. When I wasn't able, he told me, you know, put your job, do what you got to do. And it's hard to put your trust in a man, especially as a female, because at any given time, a man could get up and leave you. But mm, he never did fact. that, you know. And it was hard because <coughs> even, too, my skin was peeling from head to toe and bleeding. And he ain't never leave me. He stood by my side. Sometimes I used to question that because as a young woman, you want to be beautiful for your husband. You, you want him to be attracted to you. He used to look at me like, are you stupid? You my wife. I married you. Out of all the little tricks and ricks mm -hmm. that I could have been through, I married you. Yeah, and, thanks. And, you know, I feel like he knew that I was a smart woman and regardless of whatever happened, he knew his daughter would have been well taken care of. And I know how much it affected my daughter because, you know, for a couple of months, we couldn't hear from him. But when she got that birthday card, she knocked me over, hugging me so hard. And I could hear the smile on his face when they talked because she's so happy. Well, she knows it's mommy and daddy. That's why she knows you've uprooted her life. And it's, it's very hard as a mother to, to deal with your children's emotions and your child's emotions, especially when it comes to that series like that. But you do it. You do what you got to do. Definitely. So let me ask you this question pertaining to the fact of is she how is she coping in school and stuff of that nature because that a child enduring stuff of that nature it has an effect like you know Mark, a mental emotional effect. Mark taught her to be so strong because my daughter got straight A's in school, straight A's, two B's, and one C. And I think she does that, and she drives, and she strives towards that because she wants to do everything, every and anything in her power to make Daddy her proud. She knows, like, me and him have gone through our issues. I put all that to the side because this is more serious than that. Definitely. And, and as a real woman, I feel like I need to be there for him emotionally. Mm -hmm. I can't be there for you physically as much as I would like to, but I'm not going to stress you with anything petty because the task at hand is so much more important. And like I said, my degree is in law. I'm going to help you as much as possible. Yeah, definitely. You have some photos and stuff that, you know, we would like, you know, you would like to show and stuff of that nature because that's believed. Like I said, man, I know, I definitely know the person she referred to. A, oh, yeah. Uh, pockets, a.k.a., you know, Mark Christian. And everybody look at him like, you know what I'm saying, a certain way. And I'm sorry, but Channel 12 and Connecticut Post has done a terrible, terrible, terrible job of how they try to make him seem. That man is a family man. So Channel 12, what, what Channel 12 and Connecticut Post were, were we referring to? Channel 12 was making it, they was really, really making it seem as if he he was some type of super gangster. He all he did was nothing productive. He was in the hood. He he was kicking in doors. He was doing this and that. No, that man worked more than twelve hours out of his life. Everything else pertains to his child. After that, I helped him build, and he helped me build. Whatever he was lacking, I was there to take it, and vice versa. Okay. He loves his daughter. Even if I could question if he ever loved me, I know he loved his daughter. Without a, without a doubt. Without and, a doubt. And even with my daughter, everybody knows. Knows. They know he loved his baby. Definitely. Someone's asking a question? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Diamond Chirioki. I appreciate that. Definitely, man. We appreciate all of y'all. You know what I mean? For tuning in. This is true. This is serious. This is your boy Corona Negra. <laughs> and you can look me up. Uh, like I said, Corona Negra, Ian on Devon Good Child page. Mm -hmm. uh, Gloves off and, and breakthrough is coming together. We out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. You know what I'm saying? This is all true. We don't sugarcoat. We don't beat around the bush. We don't bite our tongue. Nope. We, and if we catch you lying, <laughs> we are going to put you out there. We don't care who you are. You just heard her talk about Connecticut Post and Channel 12. We if don't care. We will put you out there, you lying ass mother freakers. I need y'all to know that Channel 12 is so awful. Like, they, like, come on, you have people coming out there accusing him of some of the worst crimes. You have, you have no physical evidence.